Uh, where did they say I was supposed to go? Actually, the jerk. Holy crap, what the hell? That sounded like a scream coming from the cloister. A woman's scream. I mean, cloister doesn't have to be nuns. So, Brother Matthew rang the church bells early, and now one of the sisters is screaming in the chapter house. I should go see what is going on. Yes. Uh, the chapter house, though. This is the prior's house. Must say, I do not know what a chapter house is. Uh, so, you know. Actually, I could look at the map. And, uh, see that we have... Chapter house, right there. Also, the quest marker, just pointing us in the right direction. Uh, but the sister... I suppose we could go into the, the, um... What's the name of the thing? It's the old Bailey here. Could try and, like, mess around with the stuff in the crypt. Ah, secret entrance to the library. I'll have to remember this. Oh, you can find... That, that is open, for one. But also, you can find it by just... You know, it's open already. Anyway. Chapter house. That's coming from just down the hall. Maybe the chapter house. Uh, Yes. I think those screams were coming from the chapter house. Yes. I think something terrible has happened, Master Andreas. Yes, I, I think that as well, but I can't talk to you at the moment, so... Oh, they're all here. Oh, there's blood. Did you see... Oh, oh. What's happened? I think the Baron has been hurt. Oh... That is... Th I couldn't recognize that. Please, father, where is Brother Florian? Have him come quickly. Be silent, brother. Brother Florian, if you please. I'm sorry, Father. There's nothing to be done. He's dead. <coughs> Sister Margaret, calm yourself. Sister Gertrude, please take Sister Margaret back to the garden. Yes, Mother Cecilia. Oh, that's the lady that was, I think, in the in the church, like sleeping next to the church on the other side. Uh, who, this is your note. God protect us. The Baron is was a friend of the Prince Bishop of Freising. Why is he so worried about the Prince Bishop? This abbey is odd in more than one way. Its existence offends some in the church. We are far enough from Rome and Mainz that everyone forgets about this, but this could bring unwanted attention. Mainz is located on the Rhine River and uh, is the home of the Archbishop of Mainz, an elector of the Holy Roman Empire in Prima Germaniae, the Pope's substitute north of the Alps. Florian, how easily do you think you could dispose of this body? Uh, Father Abbot, what are you saying? Why are you questioning me? Why are you wasting precious time? Do you want to see the soldiers of the Prince Bishop march up our steps and fling your brothers and sisters out of your, our home? So I, what the hell? Everybody's complaining about that. What is that? God protect us? Yes. Silence! Quiet! Calm yourselves, all of you, says Cecilia. Father Abbot, Baron Rothfogel's man servant is already preparing to leave. The Baron's wife should be here in a matter of hours. This is not the time for rash decisions. Yes, yes, you're right. Forgive me. But then, what will we do? We must send the Baron's men to the court of the Prince Bishop in Freising at once. Father Cecilia, the Baron said the Prince Bishop's Archdeacon was in Innsbruck for the Imperial Diet. Uh, even better, swift action will silence any whispers of impropriety on our part. Given the Baron's stature, the Archdeacon will undoubtedly come to investigate immediately. We must cooperate with him fully and pray for a speedy resolution. Yes, yes, good. Thank you, Mother Cecilia. Brother Wozlav, uh, please. No, Wozlav? 
Yes. Please detain Brother Piero in the cellar until the Prince Bishop's men arrives. What? Brother Piero, why? Okay, well... He's acting very suspicious. But also he's an idiot. He's not really. What I'm saying is... He doesn't care what other, what other people think. I think. He's been portrayed so far as... Um, very, we have had very little interaction with him, honestly, but I get the impression that he's just, he knows his place and uh, he doesn't fear the, those beneath him. And in, like, I, I got that impression from him earlier. And then his first reaction is to be like, I'm afraid of the ones above him. And I'm like, okay, I see where this character is going. I think what this character, I think I understand what he is uh, from a literary perspective. Because he's like, he's in... Is, is he in on whatever happened here? The brother Piero definitely isn't uh, responsible for this. Because, uh, uh, you know, he's old. <laughs> That's how it goes. Uh, he might be in on it, but he's, he's not the one that got... I mean, there's just too much blood. This is this, There's somebody else going on. There's something else going on. But Mother Cecilia here, she was acting very... She had a plan. She's very sus at the moment, is all I'm saying. So I'm going to I'm gonna use my rhetoric uh, and say, Father Juno, I implore you to reconsider. He was caught in fra flagrante delicto. That's, uh, well, that's the literal Portuguese saying, I don't, in blazing offense, that's what it translates into, into in English. Indicating an, ind it's red-handed, basically. Uh, indicating an individual that has been caught in the act of committing a crime. Covered in blood with a knife in his hand? Does he act? Is he actually? Does he have a... What? Father, do you really believe that Brother Piero is capable of such a foul deed? Yes, capable enough when motivated by anger. I had no anger against the Baron, Father Abbot. I simply came across him like this. Also, I noticed his... Uh, yeah, that's normal. They all have, like, bleached um, clothings and stuff. No anger... Not even for insulting your work and forcing us to give it to Andreas? This is not a subject for debate. When the Prince Bishop's man arrives, we must not be empty-handed. I think this is just him being afraid of his superiors once again. It's not even like... It's not even... He doesn't even have a plan. Because he doesn't have a knife. I don't, I don't think he was caught in crime. Covered in blood? He was not... He's not covered in blood. He wasn't described to be covered in blood. I think he's just... He wants a fall guy. And so he is, again, just being portrayed as, as he's afraid of his superiors. Very calculatedly, so. Which is pretty cool. So, yeah. He wasn't angry. Anyone who was in the scriptorium knows that. Even Gui knows that. Be quiet. This is not your affair. Well, it is my affair if you're going to make me part of Brother Piero's supposed motive. I am through debating this with you. My decision stands. Brother Voislav will detain Brother Piero in the cellar until I say otherwise. Brother Florian, please escort Andreas out of the abbey. Andreas, do not show your face here again until tomorrow. Do you understand me? I'm going to say nothing. Because there's no benefit to saying anything here. I mean, saying yes might be of some benefit. Andreas, listen to me. I sympathize with you. I don't think Piero did this either. But this isn't the time to push the abbot. I'm sure the other brothers and sisters believe Piero is innocent as well, but the abbot is worried about the Prince Bishop's attention. I have to do something. I can't let Piero die for something he didn't do. I appreciate your passion, but if you pursue this indelicately, you could make matters worse. Take a few hours to calm your nerves and your mind. You need to think clearly. Go to the Drukers, eat a good meal, and come back at nuns. The monastic hour corresponding to 3 p.m., one of the little hours of prayer. We won't have much time, but tap on my window with a small stone and I'll let you in. Let me let me win let me in for what? To examine the body. Oh crap.
I should follow Florian's advice and go to the Druckers. Hopefully it will clear my head. Hopefully it will. Can I go back in? I can't. It doesn't even show. Interesting. And so the bells are ringing. Because somebody died. Perhaps. Don't know. But maybe I should talk to um, Cecilia here. God bless you, Andreas. God bless you, Mother Cecilia. Is there something I can help you with? Uh, yeah, I need to talk to you about the Baron, how you walked away with the sisters when he arrived. Given that the Baron was just murdered, it seems worth inquiring about the case. Why? Do you not trust in the abbot's judgment? No, of course I don't. Brother Piero, he, he wouldn't hurt a mouse. If you go around telling all of the brothers and sisters what you think, it will get back to the abbot. He'll keep you locked out of the abbey until the archdeacon's investigation is done. Then where will you be? Then help me. Help you what? Blame someone else for the murder? You know, you know that Piero didn't murder the Baron. It had to have been someone else. I will not condemn someone else to death. I'm not asking you to condemn someone, just to help me understand what happened. I am simply a nun. Why do you think I can help you? I saw how you reacted when the Baron arrived. You must know something about what's going on. All right. I did have reason to be concerned about Baron Rothvogel's presence. The Baron caused irreparable harm to one of the sisters on his last visit. The damage was severe enough that she had to leave us for some time. That is why I removed the sisters from his presence as soon as I could. Uh, which sister? Can I can I speak with her? I, no, Andreas, I don't think that would be appropriate. I'm going to say nothing again. It's a painful memory, Andreas. I appreciate that. I understand this is less information than you likely wanted. And look at her saying the thing I could have said. Twice I could have said that. Um, so this is... Uh, so the reason why I'm pushing her and being confident towards her, even though she was very suspect, is that I don't think there's anything for her to gain uh, from being deceitful towards her. Because she, if she is indeed in on this, then me being deceitful towards her is only going to antagonize her even more. And there's no reason to, um, yeah, to, to, to not try to get as much as I can out of her. Because either she's very smart and not involved, or she's very smart and involved. Um, and in, in either case, I think trying to be serious is good, and trying to butter her up, uh, as it were, might be good. Anyway, I understand this is less information than you likely wanted, but I do not think I can tell you any more in good conscience. Trust me when I say that the victims of this incident could not have killed the Baron. I need more than that. Are there any records on her, on what happened? Yes, we keep records on all the sisters in the library. Not that it does you any good. You're not allowed. Could could I ask Sister Illuminato to see them? She won't give them to you. Our records aren't available for outsiders to look through. I... I can sneak in on my own, you know. I found the secret entrance in the crypt. Don't try it. You'll be caught... And you'll be lucky if the abbot only banished you from the abbey until Judgment Day. Yeah, you're probably right. God bless you, Mother Cecilia. May God bless you, Andreas Maller. Well, I can't go there now. But it's quite clear... I might have to try it. It's quite clear. Either way, that was a fruitful conversation. He... I suspect... Uh, assaulted the sister. But it might not be that. Why can't I move? There. Is McLeod around? Ooh, what is that? What is this? A letter to the Baron from Prior Ferenc? 
Baron Rothvogel. Uh, it says. Why can't I see? Oh, it's German. Right. My god, Lorenz was blackmailing Frank to get him to perform some kind of occult ritual. No wonder Frank was so unsettled when Lorenz arrived. The Baron could have gotten him executed for witchcraft. Hmm. That's motive. That's motive right there for our brother Frank. But. I mean, it could be. Could be something else. Circumstantial. Anything is circumstantial, to be fair, but. But, yeah. Let's go to the village. Look at that. What is that? He's writing the other way around. Oh, it's the printing press! That's what that is! His words are printed! Oh, that's cool. That's weird as well, but it, I, yeah. Good day, Andreas. Back from the Abbey already. It's only noon. Andreas, are you alright? No, something terrible has happened. Oh, God. What ha- No. Forgive me. Come inside and sit down for a minute. Um, if it's not an imposition, I'd appreciate a moment to rest. Not an imposition at all, my friends. Are always welcome in my house. Besides, I could use your opinion on something. Good day, Andreas. Should I fix you a plate? This is Marie. If it's not too much trouble, I'd appreciate it. I, It would be my pleasure. This rain has got everyone's spirits down. Hopefully a good meal can cheer you up. Hello. Hello, Bertolda. How are you? Sleepy. Come back to my workshop. I'm going to do a new run of Till Eulen Spiegel. There was a printing a few years ago in Strasbourg, but it was awful, almost bereft of illustrations. What do you think of these new ones? Oh. The figures in composition are terrific, but the background is quite dense and busy. I would suggest running this in two passes, with background elements in a lighter ink to help the character stand out. Oh, that's a fine idea. I'll pass on your compliments to Marie. No, oh, she's the one that did it. Are these her woodcuts? They are. The drawings were mine, but she did the block cuts. I've got enough talent to draw the designs, but only she can do the woodcuts in the type. Bless us, O oh Lord, and these, your gifts, which we are about to receive from your bounty. <laughs> oh, look at the little uh, gir girl. I don't know. I, don't, I forget the name. Uh, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm hungry. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Andreas, what were the bells for at the Abbey? They were sounding for a long time. Uh, the visiting nobleman, Lorenz Rothvogel, was found uh, murdered in the chapter house. God in heaven! He just rode by here yesterday. Yes, and it, it gets worse. One of the elderly brothers I work with in the scriptorium, Piero, was accused of the crime. That's awful! A murder in Gearsau! How could a monk do such a thing? I'm sorry, Andreas. The Baron seemed... Like a, an interesting man, and I know he's been a patron of the Abbey for years. How did he die? Could it have been an accident? And does... Hmm. Why are you... Why is he think... Why does he... Why is he jumping to that? Did I say that Brother Piero was not? Uh, the murderer? 
I don't think the conversation is going that direction. Why is he assuming? And like, it's a double dip, so it's on purpose for the reader to to see that there's a clue here. It's a double dip because the following line is another dip, but uh, like him assuming that it could have been an accident or that I think it was an accident or the, or rather that I, that not necessarily an accident, but that it wasn't Brother Piero. And then he says, and does the abbot really believe that Brother Piero killed him? You've always spoken of him in the kindest terms. And so again, yeah. I'm suspicious of him. I'd rather spare you the details, but it's hard to believe what happened to him was natural. But no, I, I can't believe Piero did it. I can't imagine him harming anyone. Oh, don't hold back on my account. I've had children and even helped Agnes deliver a few. I'm not squeamish. Yes, blood, says Bertolt. <laughs> but if it wasn't Brother Piero, who do you think could have done it? I did see Lucky Steinhauer get into a shouting uh, argument with Lorenz yesterday, just before I walked by your place. So yeah, Lucky... I forget where he lives, but... He was in an argument. There's multiple people. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That, it, just as I thought, as a, of multiple people. Octavia, which whom I have called mistakenly Octavia with a C. Uh, but that's not her name. Octavia, she cursed the Baron. She, she specifically said, you have some nerve showing your face here after what you did. And uh, he was like, ah, oh, these people, you know, very rude and all that. But, more importantly, Otavia knows what happened. So we need to talk to Otavia about it. And also, she's a woman. Which might be related to precisely the type of assault that we are talking about here. Lorenz, or Lucky Steinhauer, shouting... I forget what Lucky said. There's so many loose... There's so many possibilities here, honestly. This food is making me hungry, honestly. I'll... This... I... Mm. Lucky... Why would he have caused to shout at the noble men? Oh, select the food to eat. Uh, the sausage. Oh, I can't eat the. Oh, okay. I'll, uh, so, egg pasta. What is egg pasta? I want egg pasta. Farmer's bread. I'll go for the farmer's bread. There's probably something else going on that you wouldn't know about here. What? What do you mean by that? I'm not one to trade gossip, but if you really want to know, talk to some of the other women in town. Or Mother Cecilia up at the Abbey. Yeah, I actually spoke with Mother Cecilia already. Her resolve to protect the sisters is unrelenting. Yes, I would imagine so. Oh, there's no need for that. Lucky is a fort right man. I'm sure if you ask him, he'll tell you what the argument was about. Thank you both. That's good advice. There's something else, though. When Lorenz and I were uh, walking through the meadow, the widow... The, uh, yes, this person over here. The game really wants us to, to know. The widow as well. Okay, she's a widower. Or is that correct? No, she's a widow. Anyway, the widow Kemperin came out of the woods and... Yes. Well, she cursed him. I'm not surprised. Otilia's late husband, Ranig, ran afoul of Lorenz on his last visit to Tassing. I don't remember the details, but Ranig died just last year and Otilia hasn't been the same since. She was already an old bitch, even before she was old. Klaus, that's enough! She's had to deal with a job's lot in life. And now she lives all alone at the edge of the woods. There are rumors she's going to lose her property soon. I do pity her, even if she's a bit... B bitter woman. There should be some exception in the law for her to inherit. Ah, it seems like it would be more just, yes. It wasn't always this way. I think my great-grandmother inherited this land way back when. Well, if men changed it, they can change it back. You're right, as always, my dear. Enough about Otilia. Is there anyone else you think may have done it? I, I don't know if he has any ill intent, but Prior Ferenc has been acting strangely since the day Lorenz arrived. Perhaps an academic disagreement. I know they're both avid readers, both of classics and new works. 
On his last visit, the Baron bought a book on astronomy from me. I know the Prior has some similar interests. But would the Prior kill someone over a simple disagreement? Uh, it's not as strange as you might think. Within the world of astronomy, some have opinions that he would kill for. Or be killed for. Uh, this, what is the date here? 1516? Somewhere around there? That's uh, f like 30 years before... Um, Copernicu? Who's the one that um, wasn't burned at the stake, but was almost famously, anyway? Anyway, what is an opinion for some is a testament of faith for others and worth killing for. That may be so, but I've never seen that sort of anger in Prior for Dank. Not even when Jerno was made abbot instead of him. Afterward, he seemed bitter, but never violent. That just doesn't seem to be part of his character. So... Lucky the Widow and Abbey Pryor. Anyone else? Well, there was something strange when we approached the Abbey together. Mother Cecilia was outside with some of the sisters. Mother Cecilia scowled and took the nuns inside without saying a word. It sounds like they have a history, at least. I do not know Mother Cecilia personally, but I have never heard anyone speak badly of her. If she had cause to dislike the Baron, I must believe she had good reason. Well, Andreas, it sounds like there's a lot to look into. Thank you for talking to me. I was feeling overwhelmed. You are always welcome here, Andreas. Anytime. Yeah! You are especially welcome with this one. I didn't finish eating the food. I did eat a little bit of everything. God be with you, Andreas. Thank you. Be good until I come back, we're told. I'll try. That little one is not good. He'll, he'll do the bad things, he will. <laughs>